The Great Regeneration It is threefold because it causes changes in the body physically, mentally and energetically. The Great Regeneration starts with thought. The moment you change your perception is the moment you rewrite the chemistry of your body. Imprints of thought vibrations are carried through our bodies by the lymphatic water system and our cells adjust accordingly. Therefore, our lymphatic water systems are key in the great regeneration. In other words, the lymphatic system creates the physical outcomes of our conscious and subconscious thoughts. Again, this is because thoughts, emotions and memories are vibrations that leave imprints in our lymph water. Water is the mirror that has the ability to show us what we cannot see. It is the blueprint for our reality, which can change with a single positive thought. All it takes is faith, if you are open to it. It is a fact that every seed begins its life exclusively in water, including all body stem cells and DNA. Stem cells are the beginning of the physical body and water should be considered as the medium for life. Stem cells are another key to the great regeneration. The potential of stem cells is fascinating. They have the ability to self-renew and become any cell in the body. The sign of the egg represents potentiality. The seed of generation, stem cell, the mystery of life. Introduction Historical literature tells us that the Great Regeneration begins with the union of the solar and lunar germs in a purified body. The evoking of man's solar energy can cleanse us from all these diseases, for its fire penetrates every element in our body and keeps the blood pure. We are inwardly divided, individuals, in divided jewels. The union of the lunar and solar germs is the overcoming of this inner division or enmity. Carnal mind versus Christ mind, black kundalini versus white kundalini, autonomic versus voluntary. Therefore I say such a person, once integrated, will become full of light, but such a person, once divided, will be full of darkness. In the average human being, the dual power is not operating in harmony, but once these two currents balance, the regenerated being will manifest, or we could say that Jesus will resurrect. The man who is reborn in us is of water and the spirit, our own regenerate self, the Christ Jesus and Son of Man. The Bible puts it like this, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Okay, that's the historical symbolic synopsis. Now. Let's see the modern scientific parallel. The esoteric lunar and solar bodies correspond with the lymphatic water and respiratory breath systems. Water is H2O, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Spirit is air, approximately 78% nitrogen, 20% oxygen. 
So the solar spirit body is mostly nitrogen and some oxygen. When nitrogen and oxygen combine in the body, nitric oxide forms. Later we'll see the incredible role of nitric oxide in the Great Regeneration. The philosophical elements of water, air, fire and earth are now represented by periodic elements, the building blocks of known life. The water element of the ancient philosophers is the hydrogen of modern science. The air has become oxygen, the fire nitrogen, the earth carbon. These key elements make up the mass majority of our wonderfully made human bodies. Masons and other hidden groups have always known the importance of scientific elements and revered them in their art and teachings. For example, the famous Masonic number 153 signifies hydrogen, which is atomic number one and has the atomic radius 53. 666 signifies carbon 12, which has six neutrons, six protons, and six electrons. Carbon is the alchemical coal of the ancient masters and the earth of material form. Carbon dioxide was alchemically known as fixed or stale air, which is interesting when you consider that breath exercises, meditations and yoga all aim to expel excess carbon dioxide, which is a poison in the body. With its seven protons, seven neutrons and seven electrons, 777, nitrogen was of course referred to as fire. A key philosophical secret was that phosphorus is the fifth element and light of the body. Phosphorus is part of the nitrogen family. Alchemically, phosphorus is considered light and nitrogen is considered fire. Here is the most important fact about nitrogen and phosphorus to bear in mind as we continue. All of the mineral cell salts in the body are formed by the precipitation of nitrogen, the fire of life, and phosphorus, the light of life. The mineral body is the alchemist's inner salt body, the solar light or sun body. Our bodies are formed from photon light electromagnetic energy. Photon light combines to form electrons. Electrons create atoms. Atoms create molecules, cell salts. Molecules create cells. Cells create tissues. Tissues create organs. Organs organize into systems. And systems organize to create the body. The Great Regeneration will now be defined in this organ-to-organ -organ overview with some critical pit stops along the way. Light and Electrons Photon light is electromagnetic energy. God is often described as light. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Therefore, we could say, God is electromagnetism. Light predominantly enters the body via the nose, mouth, eyes and fontanelles. Photon light is an intelligence, an ultimate unit, inseparable and indivisible, God. In the body, photon light is absorbed or transformed into electrons predominantly in the form of nitrogen and phosphorus, formers 
of mineral cell salts. The circulation and transformation of electromagnetic energy in biological systems is the foundation of life on Earth. In the invisible, unmanifest realm, the sacred geometry of photons reveals the seed and flower of life. Every element is built up out of one invariable unit, the electron, and we must therefore assert that mind is potential in the unit of matter, the electron itself. An electron is the lightest stable subatomic particle known. The fundamental unit of electricity is the negative charge of the electron. The Nobel Prize laureate Svent Georgi famously said all life depends on a small trickle of electrons from the sun. The sun has been personified many times over the course of history. Some examples, Brahma, Krishna, the ancient Hindus called the sun Chris, Amun, Abram, Adonis Adonai Lord, Mithras, Zeus, Aesus, Jesus. Samuel on War says that the serpentine fire, Kundalini, dwells in electrons, and electrons are the philosophers and alchemists' gold. The word gold comes from the word ore, or ore a product of the sun's rays or breath of life. Electrons are golden. Electrons are a product of the sun's rays, photon light. Electrons are present in air or breath and everywhere else if you think about it. Electrons are the fundamental unit of power or electricity. The receptacle of gold is the pineal gland, receiver and transmitter of golden solar energy. Cells in the pineal gland detect electromagnetic energy and send it throughout the nervous system by phototransduction. Christian Unity teacher Charles Fillmore also highlighted the power of electrons. Through thought energy, or the dynamic power of mind, man can release the life of the electrons secreted in the atoms that compose the cells of his body. You weren't born to die. You were born to harness your full atomic capabilities. This statement really sums up what the Great Regeneration is all about. The power stored in the millions of cells that compose the human body is infinite and accessing it is the key. Now that we have a good understanding of the light and the way it combines to form electrons and subsequently atoms such as hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and phosphorus which in turn make molecules or mineral salts we can move on to discover the journey of light through the body. Following the light, sacred secretion through the body. In the great regeneration, light comes through the door of Brahma, fontanelles, and is received by the claustrum, a blood cerebrospinal fluid barrier, CSF. One, fontanelle the door of Brahma. The fontanelle in the skull is also known as the little fountain or the opening of Brahman. In early Christian mysticism, this opening was known as Thura Aesis, the door of Aesis, Jesus. Physiologically, it is a small opening on top of the skull. 2. Claustrum, Santa Claus. 
neurons inside the claustrum branch out and extend around the entire circumference of the brain, much like a crown of thorns. A group of researchers from George Washington University found that the claustrum can act like an on-off switch for consciousness. In Latin, the claustrum is known as claustrum hematolicorosum. Claustrum means barrier, hema means blood, and licor means spirit. Therefore, claustrum hematolicorosum means blood to spirit barrier, which is exactly true since the claustrum is a barrier between blood and cerebrospinal fluid. CSF is a filtrate of blood. Dr. Carey says, it is from the claustrum that the wonderful Christ oil is formed. In plain modern terms, the light acting on the substances of the brain forms cerebrospinal fluid or Christ oil. 3. Cerebrospinal fluid CSF is a filtrate of blood. In fact, there is a perpetual exchange occurring between blood, CSF, nerve or interstitial fluid, sexual vital fluids and lymph. At the claustrum blood CSF barrier, the body turns water into wine every second. Water symbolises blood and wine symbolises CSF, spiritualised substance. CSF has a significant charge. It is saline, salty with minerals, and alkaline, meaning electron rich. CSF is secretly known as the blood of the lamb. The ventricles are even shaped like ram horns, hence the esoteric affiliation with Aries. CSF is the most electrically conductive fluid in the body. The breath charges CSF. The great regeneration relies on the charging and transmuting of this subtle fluid. The Kundalini utilises that which is termed spinal fluid. It actually ionises CSF and changes its molecular structure and consequently the basic DNA structure of the entire body. Dr Zapatera says, CSF acts like a storage field and conveyor for light energies. So far we've seen that light precipitates into CSF at the claustrum. So what happens next? Next, CSF is differentiated into two distinct potencies by the pituitary and pineal endocrine glands. These potencies are known as the black kundalini pituitary and white kundalini pineal or lunar fluid and solar fire mineral respectively. The cerebellum controls endocrine function via the autonomic nervous system and the breath via the vagus nerve supplies the power to run the entire system. Both the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems are part of the autonomic nervous system. Throughout the body, parasympathetic fibres meet with sympathetic fibres to form nerve plexuses, chakras. So the balance between these two systems improves chakra health. Remember, the divine conception, great regeneration, stands for the union of the lunar and solar germs in a purified virgin body. So let's take a look at the two potencies formed by the lunar pituitary and solar pineal. 3.1 pituitary gland, the lunar potency. The pituitary is biblically symbolized by Mary, the mother of the holy child. She produces the lunar seed, also known as the oil or water of life, 
the soul or fluid body, the silver or milk. But what exactly is the lunar germ? Let's find out. In Thinking and Destiny, Harold Percival says, a lunar germ is made of matter of the four worlds, the light world, life world, form world, and physical world. This cryptic quote is Percival describing protoplasm in a symbolic language. Thankfully, the secret teachings of all ages by Manly P. Hall gives it to us a little more plainly. It is made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Its name is protoplasm. It is the structural unit with which all living bodies, cells, start life. The lunar germ moves with the lunar month. 13 moon cycles per 12 month solar year. It corresponds with the fluidic water body, which renews itself monthly. Summary The lunar germ is protoplasm, now known as cytoplasm, esoterically known as soma. Now we can move on to the second potency. 3.2 Pineal gland the solar potency. The pineal is biblically symbolized by Joseph, the father of the Holy Child, which produces the solar seed, also known as the fire of life, the spirit or fire body, gold or honey. But what exactly is the solar germ? Let's find out. The electronic solar matter is the sacred fire of Kundalini. When we free this energy, we enter the path of authentic initiation. Samael Arm War. This quote from The Perfect Matrimony is really useful since the same author also tells us in Practical Magic that the fire of Kundalini is nitrogen. Nitrogen has seven electrons. Dr. Carey also refers to the solar germ as electrons. And we already know that electrons combine to form atoms such as nitrogen and phosphorus, which are both formers of mineral cell salts. The solar germ corresponds with the fiery electrons mineral body which renews itself yearly with the Sun. Summary. The solar germ is electrons predominantly taking form as nitrogen and phosphorus atoms which subsequently forge molecules or minerals also known as cell salts, the creators of cells. Quick recap. Light enters through the fontanelle, contacts the claustrum and precipitates into CSF. It is then differentiated into two streams by the pituitary and pineal. The two potencies are the lunar germ protoplasm pituitary stream and the solar germ electron mineral pineal stream. So what happens next? Well, Carey says the potencies then flow down into the red nucleus and consequently the olivary bodies into the descending tract known as the rubrospinal tract to the lateral column of the spinal cord. So let's take a brief look at these body parts. Four, red nucleus, red lotus of Shakti. The red nuclei monitor the function of the cerebellum. There are two red nuclei, 
one on either side of the spinal cord and their output pathways cross over underneath them. This is the crossing of the Ida and Pingala nadis. The Ida and Pingala nadis are the left and right sides of the autonomic nervous system, including sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve fibers. The pineal and pituitary body secrete the positive and negative substance along nerves that cross in the medulla. The cross formed by Ida and Pingala is actually part of a double cross, which forms the site of the crucifixion, as we will see later. 5. Olivary Bodies Gethsemane, the Olive Garden Dr. Carey refers to the olivary bodies as the lower part of the pineal. The olivary bodies are biblically symbolized by Gethsemane, the olive garden. The olives are a collection of brainstem nuclei, which function as a relay station between the spine and cerebellum. 6. The lateral column of the spinal cord. The spine consists of 33 vertebrae, each symbolizing one of the years that Jesus Christ lived for. After traveling through the red nucleus, livery bodies, and crossing sides in the rubrospinal tract, the two potencies come to the lateral columns of the spinal cord and subsequently continue through the autonomic nervous system as shown here. Summary. At the rubrospinal cross, the pituitary potency crosses from the left into the right side of the autonomic nervous system and the pineal potency crosses from the right into the left side. This coincides with Harold Percival's description in Thinking and Destiny. From the pituitary, the lunar germ descends through the nerve plexuses on the right side of the autonomic nervous system along the digestive tract. We'll visit the semilunar ganglion next, as that's the path the potencies take to reach the solar plexus. 7. The semilunar ganglion, the Sea of Galilee. The two nadis, Ida and Pingala, converge into the body through the semilunar ganglion, where they merge into the solar plexus. Carey links the semilunar ganglion to Genesareth which the metaphysical dictionary claims to be the sea of divine life and the garden of riches. The semilunar ganglion is two sympathetic ganglions, one on each side of the solar plexus, comprised of several smaller ganglions which surround the solar plexus. It is entwined with the vagus nerve. Together, the solar plexus and semilunar are known as the grand centre of all the ganglions and plexuses of organic life. Having passed through the semilunar ganglion, the two potencies arrive in the solar plexus, which we will now take a look at. 8. The Solar Plexus Bethlehem Every 29.5 days a seed is born in or out of the solar plexus. The oil unites with the mineral salts and thus produces the monthly seed which goes into the vagus. In other words, three streams unite in the solar plexus to form the monthly seed. One, the pineal stream, 
two, the pituitary stream, and three, the breath, remember nitrogen and oxygen, which travels in the vagus. But what is this seed that Carey and other mystics speak so highly of? Well, in the spleen, we find the actual scientific parallel. So let's head over there next. Nine, the spleen, the manger, birthplace of the Jesus seed. The spleen is part of the lymphatic water system. Lymph waters are high in sodium, as are CSF and blood. The spleen is considered the sodium organ. Sodium and other mineral cell salts passing in and out of cells create the body's electricity. Not only does this electrical system run the body, but it is actually the subtle substance with which thinking is done. In other words, the popular manifestation mantra, thoughts are things, is completely true. Thoughts have form, mineral or minderal cell salt form. So the imprints made by thought in the waters of the body are of sodium and other mineral cell salt essences. Thought is literally creating the body with every breath. Now, here's the moment you've been waiting for a full disclosure of the seed that is formed by the lunar and solar potencies. The spleen contains the all-important germinal centre, symbolically known as the manger. This is the precise place where Jesus is born. Jesus is a germ of life. G.W. Carey. The spleen mysteriously creates cells. It does this by enclosing a minute body from the cerebrum within a case, Moses basket. Thus, within the spleen is formed the true physiological seed cells of the body. Germinal centres are sites of multipotent stem cell and white blood cell production. Hilton Hotema tells us that in their infancy, the multipotent stem cells produced in the lymphatic spleen are no different to procreative sexual stem cells. Up to that moment, the life and conduct of the male and female gametes, infant sperm and ovum cells, present nothing different from that of the lymph cells. The lymphatic system, including the spleen, transports lymph, a fluid containing white blood cells throughout the body. According to Dr. Carey, the great regeneration invigorates white blood cell presence and production, thus improving the vitality of the body along all lines. The process of regeneration causes the white cells of the blood to overcome the prevalence of red cells. Therefore, the flesh becomes transparent and he manifests more and more of the Father. He is no longer man, but has become a God. 
Multipotent stem cells are infant cells which have the ability to become many types of bodily cells. They are formed by the union of the lunar and solar potencies from the pituitary and the pineal. Anna Kingsford describes this process beautifully on page 144 of The Perfect Way. In her bosom, protoplasmic lunar body, is conceived the bright and holy light, the nucleoli. The nucleoli of stem cells are the solar pineal potency, which are rich in, yes, you guessed it, nitrogen and phosphorus. The image shows the radiance of nitrogen and phosphorus in stem cell nucleoli. Anna Kingsford goes further to say that solar nucleoli are in fact the philosopher's white stone. The white stone has always been the object of special veneration. It is the well-known symbol of the divine spirit. The nucleoli of the cell, the sun of the system, the head of the pyramid. In summary, the solar germ, electric pineal potency, unites with the lunar germ, protoplasm pituitary potency, and the breath, supplied by the vagus, to form stem cells. Jesus. Professor Hotema explains this process most poetically. The spirit a fiery nucleus of noetic intelligence is plunged into the fluidic habitat of a body of watery flesh. On page 21 of the Facts of Nutrition, Professor Hilton Hotema says, the protoplasm of the cell surrounding the nucleus is the negative lunar alkaline element the nucleus is the positive solar acid element. This makes the cell a bipolar mechanism and the acid alkali balance is imperative for life. He is telling us that every cell is bipolar or lunisolar. In short, the nucleus of stem cells contains nucleoli and DNA, solar, and the cell body contains protoplasm, lunar. The DNA chromosomes in the nucleus are tiny radio antenna. They pick up and receive solar rays and convert them into electric currents in accordance with the law of animation. The production of the physiological stem cells of the body are what the masters once referred to as Jesus being born in Bethlehem, the solar plexus, which innervates the spleen. The germs of life take on human form as they enter the stomach and spleen. Then, at the second stage, these human cells are taken down fall by Saturn into hell, meaning that in the organs of procreation they are conjoined with animal germs or procreative goat germs. So the seed then descends to the procreative organs, hell via T12, as we shall now see. 10. Thoracic vertebrae 12, T12, Gilgal. T12 is the place where the solar plexus meets the spinal cord via the semilunar ganglion. 
It is also the point where the spinal cord tapers off into Sodom and Gomorrah. At this junction, the higher forces raise a portion of the seed up the spinal cord by what Percival calls automatic reclamation. And the lower forces pull the seed down to the fish gate, which leads to the genitals, where there's an opportunity for voluntary reclamation. Biblically, this location is known as Gilgal, a very significant place. Gilgal is the place where Elisha neutralized poison. Gilgal is also the place where Elijah was taken up in a chariot of fire. Gilgal, a circle or rolling away, the place where the 12 stones were set up, refers to, in anatomy to the 12th thoracic vertebra at which place the semilunar ganglion connects. At this point, the seed or arc enters Jordan or the spinal cord. T12 marks the center of the human organism. The metaphysical dictionary tells us that Gilgal means whirlwind. The whirlwind is the DNA double helix which is formed by the sacred geometry of the ratcheting dodecahedron in the pre-existent invisible realm. This is why the dodecahedron is considered the ascension vehicle. DNA is the master of transformation. As proven by epigenetics, our thoughts can rewrite our genetic DNA codes. The DNA double helix looks like two entwined serpents winding up as the dodecahedron turns. Each side of the dodecahedral structure is a pentagon. The formation of DNA is often described as a spiral staircase or ladder. The vertical sides of the DNA ladder are essentially phosphorus. The horizontal rungs of the DNA ladder are essentially nitrogen. We'll learn more about nitrogen and phosphorus and their role in the great regeneration later. For now, it will suffice to say that both are integral to DNA and stem cell production. Not to mention DNA resides in the nucleus of every stem cell along with the nucleoli. Since DNA is the very fabric or program for life, it's as though the ancient masters believed that our bodies are animated from this central point, T12. Let's take a pit stop to look at some facts about DNA. Under a microscope, the cross-section of DNA reveals the seed of life. In the book of Revelation, chapter 19, 13 to 14, God is described as being clothed in a fabric dipped in blood. Fabric symbolizes DNA chromosomes. So in other words, scripture is telling us that God or light is in DNA, which is present in every cell of the body. Thus, the life of the flesh, DNA, truly is in the blood, Leviticus 17.11. The cells of all living beings shine their light, electromagnetic energy, and DNA is the source of this light. 
When the photon light radiated from DNA is absorbed by the body, it forms nitric oxide. DNA is the molecule of life, the genetic information of all species is being encoded by the nitrogen bases in DNA. This is the universal language of four letters, C-T-A-G. Every cell in the world contains DNA and every cell is filled with salt water. In many cultures, it is a spiritual belief that salty ocean water is the essence of all life. The concentration of salt, minerals, inside cells is similar to that of the worldwide ocean. DNA is literally bathed in seawater, which plays an important part in establishing DNA's double helix structure. DNA's twisted ladder shape is a direct consequence of the cell's watery environment. DNA goes together with water just like mythical serpents do. Before we get back to the organ by organ account, we must consider the magic of water. Water emits photon light and is an electromagnetic dipole, meaning that it's both positively charged and negatively charged. So, the lymphatic water system is electromagnetic. It is our light energy body. The lymph system is called the white blood system in many cultures. The lymph system is the gateway for communication between blood, CSF, nerval interstitial fluid, sexual vital fluids and lymph fluid. The lymph system is the oxygen delivery and purification system at the cellular level. Everything in the body is made of cells. All generation and degeneration of the body happens at the cellular level. The lymphatic system maintains the health of the entire cellular terrain. Its movement is upwards towards the neck, against the force of gravity. Our bodies are 72% water and the lymphatic system is the most extensive system in our body. When the lymph system is compromised, there will be a change in the body's pH. pH stands for potential hydrogen, which basically refers to the number of electrons available. As stated earlier, literally everything that we think, feel and are exposed to creates imprints on our lymph water body. The laws of the universe are written in water. The golden ratio is found in molecules of meltwater. In meltwater, the angle between hydrogen atoms is 108 degrees and the ratio of the length of hydrogen ties is 0 0.618. This is a special state of water. In melting from its frozen state, water deletes all information from its memory, retaining only one program the program for life. Everything in nature's perfection has been created in accordance with the program for life, the golden ratio. Remember, many cultures believe that water is the essence of all life. 
Even the Bible book of Genesis insinuates that water is pre-existent. The creator transmitted the program of life to every living creature through water. This is why the lymphatic system and our body's pH level, acid to alkaline, is so important. Acid is devoid of free electrons. Alkali is full of electrons. So our body should be slightly alkaline. Electrons are teeny tiny magnets holding the cells of the body together, maintaining life and slowing degeneration. Having highlighted the power of water as literally the catalyst for life and health, we can get back to the organ by organ account. Intestine, the alchemist's alembic. The alchemist's alembic bottle is the vas hermetic, hermetic vase, fashioned after the lower intestine of the body. The stomach and small intestines are the vessels in which the sustaining minerals of life are prepared. These support the birth of the Jesus seed or stem cell which occurs in the spleen. Without digestion, the great generation is physically impossible. Digestion serves many bodily functions. It renovates blood, it renovates all the organs of the body, it renovates the nerves and the brain, it stimulates the activity of nitric oxide. And most importantly, it sets the vital mineral cell salts contained in food free, creating a mineral base for the body. The mineral base is carried into circulation throughout the rest of the body via absorption into the blood and lymph at the small intestines. One constituent of the mineral base produced in the gut is serotonin, a precursor to DMT and the biochemicals of enlightenment. Speaking on digestion, Dr. Carey warns that the seed can be ruined by alcoholic drinks or gluttony that cause ferment acid and even alcohol in the intestinal tract. Thus, no drunkard can inherit the kingdom of heaven. Historically, the essence produced by digestion in the small intestine was known as first matter, aka lac virginis, virgin's milk or prima materia. It is described as an oily water or fatty lymph and it supplies the blood with the energy derived from food, which is mainly hydrogen. First matter is comprised of the common elements, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen and phosphorus all the constituents of DNA. DNA is rich in phosphorus. Master alchemists recognized phosphorus as the fifth element, a sort of philosophical secret. Since phosphorus absorbs light and even glows with it, it is the agent of spiritual light in the body. Phosphorus is part of the nitrogen family. Alchemically, phosphorus is considered to be light and nitrogen is considered to be fire. In the pre-existent man, 
Professor Hotema explains that nitrogen, fire, and phosphorus, light, produce life, which is true in the sense that they are the formers of mineral salts and are fundamental parts of waterborne DNA. DNA is quite literally the quint essence of life. Quint means five. So DNA is the five essence, comprised of the five fundamental elements. Earth, water, air, fire, spirit. The small intestine plays a role in phosphorus absorption. So now would be a good time to shed a little more light on phosphorus, which was renamed Lucifer in the Latin Bible. Phosphorus and carbon, the sides of the DNA ladder. The moral of this gospel of the flesh is to produce plenty of phosphorus by means of good eating and drinking. Those who say, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die, I diametrically opposed to the Holy Scriptures. The biological in the body form of phosphorus is called phosphate, which basically consists of phosphorus and oxygen. Phosphates improve nerve function and nutrition, are active in creating the bone matrix, and are necessary for sexual function and reproduction. Phosphates are vital for energy production and storage as well as producing DNA and RNA. Phosphates have a critical function in stem cell development, proliferation, and differentiation. When the body's pH becomes too acidic, phosphorus availability decreases. Phosphates produce deoxyribose, the sugar phosphate backbone of DNA. Deoxyribose is a pentose sugar meaning a five carbon sugar. The five carbon sugar with a pentagon structure forms the vertical sides of the DNA ladder. Looking more closely at the word carbon affords us the opportunity to make some interesting links. For example, Dr. Carey calls the seed Osiris in his car and Strong's Concordance cites car as being from the origin kara meaning whirling, dancing or helix. Kara is a derivative of karyo meaning nucleus or seed and funnily enough karyotin or karyotin means the same as chromatin, which is just DNA and protein in the cell nucleus. We will now return to the organ to organ analysis where the seed has now reached the procreative organs. Procreative organs, Sodom and Gomorrah. The lunar germ takes one week to reach the solar plexus and keeps descending. After the second week, the lunar germ reaches its lowest point in the large intestine where it crosses over to the left side via the coccygeal plexus in front of the coccyx. In Strong's Concordance, Sodom and Siddam are referred to as places of the sea salt, mineral reservoirs. The early Jews called the sacral and coccygeal plexuses the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. The sacral and coccygeal root plexuses innervate the procreative organs. 
the organs of this lower region work together to process one, the procreative seed, sperm or ovum, and two, the procreative sexual vital fluid. Therefore, this section includes A, the gonads, which process procreational seeds, and B, the prostate, which processes seminal fluid. The semen is excreted by the prostate as stated, and the zoa by the gonads, the life essence of the body. These two, the seeds and the fluids, don't combine unless ejaculation occurs. If not wasted, these essences are reabsorbed by the body and become what Percival calls the soil in the spleen, the materials available for stem cell production. The seed portion. Sperm in males and ovum in females are constituents of semen. Spermatogonia are the infant form of sperm and ovum are the female equivalent. Simply stated, they are stem cells. In their infant form, they are still able to differentiate into a variety of different cell types. If preserved, the sperm degenerate and their molecules are reabsorbed into the body. This is the true 10% tithe. The animal man actually robs his body of its cells, one tenth to be exact, informing the germs of procreation. This is a fact which science will one day admit. Since the procreative seed is rich in electricity, specifically nitrogen and phosphorus, mineral cell salts and nutrients, saving it improves the quality and volume of the soil in the spleen. This is what's known as the offering up of animals, procreative germs. If the soil in the spleen is enriched by the reabsorbed procreative seed, the cells produced there will be remarkable also. Thus we have the regeneration of the body occurring under divine law. An interesting constituent of procreative essences is spermine crystals. Spermine crystals are a nerve stimulant that facilitate cellular regeneration and support the helical structure of DNA RNA. Gnostics refer to the procreational seed, which becomes the furnishing product in the spleen, as the salt of alchemy, because all 12 cell salts exist within it. Samuel Arn War warns us not to spill it, but to transform it, because mastery is represented in the salt of the earth, which is in our sexual secretions. The fluid portion. The prostate is known as the skein's gland in women. Ejaculatory tubes enter these glands. The fluid portion of sexual substance is alkaline in reaction, rich in calcium, phosphorus, nitrogen, lecithin, albumin, nucleoproteins, iron and vitamin E. It is remarkably similar to the fluids of the nervous system. Theoretically, life force and vital fluids are the same thing existing in different states. After seminal fluid is broken down in the prostate gland and assuming it is not ejaculated, 
it will make its way back through the capillaries into the blood. Some experts consider the prostate to be the seat of Kundalini. Others consider it to be the coccygeal body, as we'll see later. Professor Hotema states that when the prostate and its oil act properly, addictions can be dissolved. The higher the quality and quantity of sexual vital essences, the more vibrant the life force sustaining the body. When scripture talks about separating the sheep from the goats, it is highlighting the importance of leading with your head centre, Aries, and not letting carnal desire, stemming from the sacral centre, Capricorn or goat, lead you astray. CSF ventricles are shaped like a sheep or ram's head, Aries with its curling horns. The procreative organs resemble a goat. In summary, the seed descends to the procreative organs where it can be preserved and reabsorbed into the body, providing a powerful mineral base for the production of stem cells. Kidney Naphtali During the third week, the lunar germ ascends from the coccygeal plexus through the left autonomic nervous system up to the region of the left kidney. The spleen is located on the left side of the body. We can assume that this is why Percival specifies the left kidney also. In the biology of Kundalini, Jaina Dixon says, tingles are felt, especially on the left side of the body. The tingles and bubbles are always associated with increased kundalini flow. The kidneys are regarded as the body's most important reservoir of chi, life force energy. The root word in kidney is kid, meaning young goat. Kids are children. The inner child is the inner chai or chi, photon light precipitating as nitrogen, fire and phosphorus light, of which there is a noted amount in the kidneys. And I won't tell you the amount of dynamite we could make with all the nitrogen and phosphorus we could extract from a kidney. The bulk of nitrogen and phosphorus is stored in the kidney organ energy system, which includes the adrenal glands and the testes or ovaries. The adrenal glands sit like barrister wigs on top of kidneys. Judge not, lest ye be judged. The kidneys regulate the body's acid alkaline pH balance and we already know how important pH balance is toward the great regeneration due to the bipolar acid alkaline luni solar nature of every cell in the body. Pancreas, all creator. The word pancreas is composed of the two roots, pan meaning all, as in the all pervasive source of creation, and creas meaning to form. The pancreas is referred to as the bread pan, pantry, or pannier, bread basket. It is innervated by the solar plexus, Bethlehem, house of bread. The pancreas is situated in the stomach, behind the navel, and secretes insulin. Insulin communicates with the genes 
and vitalizes DNA gene expression. Heart Center, Jerusalem. Jerusalem symbolizes the great nerve center just back of the heart. It is the Anahata cardiac plexus formed by nerves from the cervical ganglia. The loves and hates of the mind are precipitated to this ganglionic receptacle of thought and are crystallized there. This is really important because love stimulates oxytocin release. The flow of the pituitary chemical oxytocin is enhanced by feelings of love and pure intention in the heart. Subsequently, CSF flow increases and pressurizes so that the pineal can upgrade melatonin. This will be explained more thoroughly later. The endocrine thymus gland is associated with the cardiac plexus. It is situated in the chest and begins to shrink when the genital organs develop. The majestic thymus stocks the body with lymphocytes, white blood cells, which are integral to the great regeneration as described earlier in the spleen section. Lymphocytes have the ability to travel freely through the body and are more abundant than any other of the body's wandering cells. The vibrations of the thymus have the ability to drive health or disease. What we love and what we hate here build cells of joy or of pain. In summary, feelings of love originating in the thymus cause the pituitary to secrete oxytocin and consequently the pineal can upgrade melatonin. The seed's journey then continues upward from the thymus to the thyroid, which is also enervated by cervical ganglia. Thyroid, cervical vertebrae four, the baptism. Jesus was baptized of John in the fluids, the Christ substance of the spinal cord. Dr. Carey says that the word John is a chemical formula. Let's unpack this. Jesus is said to be 30 years old when John baptizes him. Jesus' 33 years of life symbolize the 33 vertebrae in the human spine. Therefore, we know that Jesus' 30th year must correspond with the 30th vertebrae of the spine. This is C4, the fourth cervical vertebrae. The top of the thyroid gland is level with C4. The thyroid uses iodine, an electron donor, to produce thyroxine, a powerful hormone which disinfects all the channels of the autonomic nervous system while we sleep. Without this biological iodine, we would not be able to live. Thyroxine literally baptizes or purifies the body, mind and soul. And the letters which spell John, previously ion, are found in the chemical formula of thyroxine. In summary, the Jesus seed is baptized by thyroxine at C4. This leads us to the crucifixion. Double cross, crucifixion. 
three years after his baptism at C4, Jesus is crucified at age 33. Vertebral level 33 is at the medulla, near the entrance to the cerebellum, where the double cross of crucifixion, transmutation, is situated. Golgotha is the base of the human skull, where the spinal cord meets the brain. At this point occurs a double nerve crossing made by Ida Ampingala and the vagus nerve. The crucifixion can actually be likened to an invigoration of potential. To crucify means to add or to increase a thousandfold. When electric wires are crossed, they set on fire all inflammable substances near them. When the Christed seed crossed the nerve at Golgotha, the veil of the temple fell and the generative cells of the body were quickened or regenerated. After its crucifixion, the seed's constituents enter the cerebellum, which is the tomb. Cerebellum, the tomb. The cerebellum is synonymous with the Masonic sprig of acacia and the biblical place Jericho. In fact, many esoteric symbols correspond with the sacred cerebellum. Dr. Carey links the cerebellum with Taurus and Venus, Phosphorus. Venus rules the awakened man. Carey also proposes that the cerebellum is the tomb where Jesus was laid to rest. James Price refers to the cerebellum as the magnetic chemical centre. Electrons are tiny magnets. The cerebellum is the intuitive brain, which controls the autonomic functions of the body, such as breathing, circulation, sleeping, digestion and swallowing. All of the activity of the body muscle tension, joint relaxation, hearing, vision, the relationship of every part of the body in time and space sends impulses to the cerebellum. The cerebellum is like an electrical loom. Electrical impulses give the cerebellum a perfect representation of the body's position in time and space. When CSF is sufficiently charged and transmuted, the doors to this subconscious brain are flung open, allowing the conscious mind access to its power. The cerebellum clearly demonstrates the proper functioning of the intellect as it begins to move into Christ consciousness. As we become aware of the underlying activity that coordinates, balances and harmonizes every action in creation, the cerebellum begins to receive this picture. Then we have available to us the information that represents the total body of creation and we can become co-creators with the primary creator. The cerebellum is the part of the brain that receives messages from the nervous system. It tells us what we think or feel about certain things. Eckhart Tolle explains that in the absence of awareness, virtually all of your thoughts happen to you instead of for you, meaning that the autonomous system is running riot and keeping you imprisoned 
to discordant thought patterns. Thus you are not considered a master of your self. This concept is personified by Judas betraying Jesus. The other brain is the cerebellum, a negative organ or switchboard. Switching the magnetic aura from the autonomic system to the cerebral and spinal nerves. Each brain has its nervous system. This quote highlights the dual aspects of the nervous system. In summary, when the seed is crucified, it remains 2.5 days in the cerebellum, which essentially switches, diffuses or resurrects its energy from autonomic involuntary power to the central aware intelligence. And on the third day ascends to the pineal gland that connects the cerebellum with the optic thalamus, the central eye in the throne of God. The cerebellum admits the resurrected current through the cerebellar lingula into the fourth ventricle, CSF reservoir, where it is distributed to the CSF, the pituitary and the pineal. Optic thalamus, the holy eye. The two oval masses connected by the massa intermedia were designated the optic thalami because they were found to be involved with the processing and projections of visual reality. The optic thalamus is also known as ophthalmos or optonomi, the eyes of the mind, thalamus opticus, the Latin form of couche optique, the holy eye, the eye of providence, the eye which sleepeth not, the eye which is the subsistence of all things. The optic thalamus, meaning light of the chamber, is the inner or third eye, situated in the centre of the head. It connects the pineal gland and the pituitary body. The optic nerve starts from this single eye. Massa intermedia, reality projector. The massa intermedia is the center of the optic thalamus. Its surfaces form part of the lateral wall of the third CSF ventricle. Reality literally projects from the massa intermedia. At the massa intermedia is the center of the brain's torus field. This center point is a plane of inertia built by the brain's resonance. Our senses simply absorb and filter the frequencies that we project from the internal to the external back into consciousness and perceives them as reality. The frequencies vibrate the cerebrospinal fluid inside the third ventricle, giving rise to the shapes and forms of so-called physical life. The entire experience of life is generated in this way. So we do indeed write our own life stories. And the realization of this causes neurons to light up creating new and powerful pathways of thought and possibility in the cerebrum or most high. Cerebrum, most high. The cerebrum is symbolized by the biblical character Abraham. The cerebrum is the upper brain, most high, north pole or Jehovah. Dr. Carey states that Aries, cerebrum, and Taurus, cerebellum, lay down the law 
on the other parts of the body. So the refined essences refresh the contents of the cerebrum and another cycle immediately begins at the claustrum which continues to integrate the light. But we can't conclude the journey without knowing what climaxes occur in the pituitary and pineal. Pituitary, the moon. When the spirit fire is lifted up through the 33 segments of the spinal column and enters into the human skull, it passes into the pituitary body where it invokes Ra and demands the sacred name. The pituitary is the master gland of the endocrine system. The release of pituitary secretions corresponds with the electromagnetic radiation and gravitational pull of the moon. Macrocosmically, the moon regulates the tides and oceans in time with its monthly cycles. Microcosmically, the pituitary hormones regulate and refresh our soul, fluid body, on a monthly cycle also. This is possible due to the presence of magnetite crystals. Posterior pituitary lobe. The lunar portion of the regenerative seed is said to be a posterior pituitary lobe secretion. Pituitrin is the historical name for combined secretions of oxytocin and vasopressin. Oxytocin. The moment oxytocin levels go up, the brain's survival centers cool off. The amygdala, an anagram for Magdalene, slows the circuits of fear, sadness, pain, anxiety, aggression and anger. Then, the only thing we feel is a love for life. In short, love produces oxytocin. The chemical composition of oxytocin is similar to that of protoplasm, the lunar germ. Oxytocin has many important roles in the temple body, including the stimulation, production and mitosis of stem cells. Lack of oxytocin brings on premature aging but increasing oxytocin levels through meditation, compassion and forgiveness actually slows the aging process by improving the behaviour of stem cells. Vasopressin. Vasopressin mediates stress and stabilises circulation. Vasopressin has the monumental task of maintaining the appropriate volume of water in the extracellular matrix. This allows proper cellular function. In other words, vasopressin is indispensable to the vital fluids of the body. Pituitary secretions act as a catalyst for pineal activity, thus producing the felt sensation of the great regeneration. In the brain, it first activates the pituitary, the feminine negative pole, causing it to send a stream of bluish solar electricity through the infundibulum to the pineal, the male positive pole, thus completing the circuit. Pineal, the pinnacle. The stream of blue solar electricity traveling from the pituitary to the pineal is nitric oxide. The sky is blue due to the presence of nitrogen. The pinnacle of enlightenment produced in the pineal gland has two major aspects. One, the stimulation of nitric oxide release, the Kundalini. Two, the upgrade of melatonin into pinaline, DMT and the biochemicals of enlightenment, the nectar of the gods. 
The pineal gland is bathed in highly charged cerebrospinal fluid. The pineal contains calcite crystals that are piezoelectric, endothelial cells that generate nitric oxide, and pinealocytes that mediate nitric oxide release. When we are in a state of harmony, the pituitary secretes more oxytocin and vasopressin, causing pineal crystals to vibrate more rapidly. This increases our vibratory frequency centered in the massa intermedia. This is the alchemical wedding. Lunar and solar bodies uniting in a climax of power and healing. Jesus said, if these two make peace with each other in this one house, they will say to the mountain, move away, and it will move away. The harmonic state initiated by pituitary secretions causes the rapid release of nitric oxide and stimulates the pineal to upgrade melatonin into pinaline, DMT and a host of other widely beneficial neurochemicals. Nitrogen, the spirit fire. Nitric oxide is basically nitrogen and oxygen. Nitric oxide influences pineal metabolism, DMT synthesis. When photon light is absorbed by the body, it forms nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is essential for the metabolism of all cellular regeneration and it stimulates mRNA, the messenger of DNA. Nitric oxide is a molecule of health. The more, the better. The benefits of self-produced nitric oxide are prolific. In the biology of Kundalini, Jaina Dixon says, tingles and bubbles are always associated with increased Kundalini flow. There is some indication that the tingles are associated with increased nitric oxide. Remember, air is mostly nitrogen and oxygen. Electrons in the air are literally our life force. We breathe to take in life force in the form of electrons. Nostril breathing increases nitric oxide in the body. Hence all of the pranayamas that involve nasal breathing. In Hinduism, a common mantra is Om. Christianity altered Om and created their Amen. Chanting Om boosts the production of nitric oxide in the body. In fact, most spiritual practices boost nitric oxide flow and release excite carbon dioxide poison. Melatonin upgrades. Like the sun, the pineal wakes us up with its serotonin secretion and puts us to sleep with its melatonin secretion. Serotonin, melatonin is the nectar of life. Sero means seed and mel is the Greek word for honey. A glimpse at their chemical structures reveals the letters that spell honey. Serotonin and melatonin increase DNA synthesis and induce mitosis, cell renewal. Serotonin, melatonin and all of the enhanced biochemicals of enlightenment are derived from tryptophan. Looking at the tryptophan DMT pathway 
really helps us understand the concept of melatonin upgrades. DMT in the pineal glands of biblical prophets gave God to humanity and let humans perceive parallel universes. When pituitary hormones stimulate the pineal to upgrade melatonin into DMT, the DMT stimulates photon light emissions from DNA, creating more nitric oxide and causing us to actually shine brighter. But DMT does not work alone in the great regeneration. A whole host of other blissful biochemicals are produced too. The hallucinogen penylene is a major contributor to the felt experience of enlightenment. The subconscious mind uses penylene to communicate with the deeper spheres, allowing prophetic visions to be seen on the timeline. Lack of sleep inhibits penylene production. When the kundalini hits the pineal gland, it ionizes the spin ratio of serotonin. Its electrons interchange, altering its chemical nature. The molecule itself is reconfigured to its highest potential, penylene. DMT, penylene and all the biochemicals of enlightenment are detailed in my book, The God Design, Secrets of the Mind, Body and Soul. The biochemicals of enlightenment travel from the pineal to the optic thalamus and the third ventricle. The upgraded biochemicals act as a foaming agent, biblically Epaphras in CSF, causing it to rise and multiply. When the supply of cerebrospinal fluid exceeds the volume of the central canal and the ventricles of the brain, it seeps over and bathes the nerves, resulting in the experience of an intense physical and spiritual bliss. Like yeast, the seed that comes forth from the pineal expands and causes the oil in the spinal cord to multiply. Flashes of light and the ultimate clarity of mind occurs. The massa intermedia is freed from discordant cycles, limitless potential is realized and the great regeneration is underway. Terminal filament bridge to immortality. In Thinking and Destiny, Harold Percival says that the terminal filament is atrophied or clogged up in adults. He says it takes 13 lunar cycles to reopen or regenerate the terminal filament. The terminal filament is a complicated subject and this is already a long video so I won't explain all of the details here. However, the book based on this video is called The Cell of Life, Awakening and Regenerating. It incorporates all the details from this video plus many other valuable discoveries, insights and facts. The terminal filament terminates in the coccygeal body. So this will be our last stop on the journey of the great regeneration. Coccygeal body, Kundalini gland. According to Jaina Dixon, the Kundalini gland is the coccygeal body and not the prostate discussed earlier. 
The coccygeal body is a gland situated at the bottom of the coccyx and is said to pulsate when Kundalini nitric oxide flow increases. This has been esoterically described as an inward ejaculation up the spine. Carey's description of the Kundalini rising from this point also sounds like nitric oxide gas. That which is in this canal is of a substance more like steam or gas than anything else. The coccygeal body is comprised of epitheloid cells known to generate nitric oxide. It is a nexus of the body-mind systems. Hormonal, blood, sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves and the immune lymph system. Therefore, it is clearly a key to the homeostasis and regeneration of the body. Conclusion. There is a perpetual cycle occurring in the temple body. The cycle can cause degeneration or regeneration physically, mentally and spiritually depending on our vibration and choices. The regeneration of the fluidic lunar body happens monthly, coinciding with the moon. The regeneration of the mineral solar body happens yearly, coinciding with the sun. Light in the form of photons, electromagnetic energy, is received by the brain and differentiated by the pineal and pituitary. The two potencies flow through the autonomic nervous system, through the semilunar ganglion and into the solar plexus where they merge and conceive the seed in the spleen. After conception, some of the seed will automatically flow up the spinal cord from T12. Percival calls this automatic reclaiming. The remainder enters the vagus nerve and descends to the procreative organs where it is further vivified, if not expelled. Through what Percival calls voluntary reclaiming, the vivified seed is then reabsorbed into the body where it begins its ascension to C4 for the baptism. On its path to C4, it travels through other vital organs, including the kidneys and the heart. Love in the heart stimulates oxytocin release by the pituitary. This chemical is the catalyst for pineal metabolism. After its baptism by thyroxine, the seed arrives at the double cross of Ida and Pingala and the vagus nerve where it is crucified. After crucifixion, the seed is sent to the tomb, cerebellum. The cerebellum admits the resurrected seed into the fourth ventricle, CSF reservoir, where it is distributed into CSF, the pituitary and the pineal. This causes the pituitary to secrete floods of oxytocin and vasopressin, which consequently invigorates the pineal. The stimulated pineal glows rich with nitric oxide and upgrades melatonin to DMT and the other biochemicals of superconsciousness. Immediately after, the process will begin again and again. Each cycle permits some of the essence to descend the central CSF canal via the ventricles, thus the body is purified by degree. After the 13th round, the hollow 
through the terminal filament is said to be fully cleared. Thus the seed can travel directly from the coccygeal body to the brain. The biochemicals of the great regeneration or sacred secretion enhance consciousness, cognitive abilities and health along all lines. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found it useful on your personal journey. I now have a super consciousness awakening course available through Teachable and it's really designed to help you awaken your own super consciousness. The world needs more light workers, more loving individuals who know how to access and use their true God power. We are all divine beings or gods, if you like, as it was stated in Psalm 82, 6. But as a race, our power and divinity has been sadly forgotten and or diminished. Spiritual awakening is largely a remembering and a reactivation of your innate human power. This power is your true birthright. For centuries, these mysteries have been hidden away and kept only for an elite few. The time has finally come when these life-changing secrets can be revealed. So if you would like to learn more about the inner alchemical process, and most importantly, how to activate and realize the incredible benefits for yourself, then I will share the links to the course and to the Cell of Life book in the description box below this video. Now is the time, guys. We came here for love. Namaste.